Good morning, everybody. On behalf of CMS, I want to welcome you to this training of the SNF Skilled Nursing Facility Quality Reporting Program. Uh, we're building these programs, and I know these are anxious times for the skilled nursing facility long-term care in general, with a lot of changes coming down the pike from CMS, um, and again, not, not the least of which are the nursing home compare measures that have changed, the quality reporting programs that are beginning in October, uh, with new measures being added every year uh, with the new rule. We have the value-based purchasing. Uh, we have the uh, payroll-based journal staffing measures. We have not, and then the big elephant in the room uh, are the new regulations and requirements when, when, when they are finally published. So we understand that there are a lot of changes coming your way. Um, I'm sure it creates a lot of uh, confusion and anxiety amongst your, your staff. So our role today is to make uh, the SNF QRP as clear and transparent as possible so that you can successfully implement this program in your facilities. Um, so I, I'm going to just go over some of the um, slides that have been presented in numerous presentations over the last two years. And as you know, the Impact Act is what is spurring all of these changes along uh, with the SNF QRP. Um, so, and not to mention the, uh, the new regulation requirements that was also uh, specified in the Impact Act. So CMS is responding to these legislative challenges by uh, writing rules and uh, building the programs. So the, um, the driver of all of this is a data element uniformity, assessment domain standardization, and the Impact Act of 2014. Um, so you can imagine, you know, leading up to this, I have only been with the Division of Chronic and Post-Acute Care for a year, and they have been extremely busy. Um, the, my colleagues have been, and, and our colleagues in Econometrica and RTI, our contractors who are our measure developers, have been very, very busy. It's, it's a very challenging act to implement. And um, so that's, and as you know, it's not just uh, SNF. It's not just skilled nursing facilities. It's long-term care hospitals. It's home health agencies and it's in inpatient rehabilitation facilities. So this has been um, uh, quite a challenge in developing all of this in the time frame that was required in the law. So this law was passed only just up, not even two years ago, on, in September, um, and enacted on October 6th. So we're just closing in on two years. And I think that, um, I, I think you've all I, don't, I hope you've all uh, availed yourselves of the opportunity to um, uh, view some of the presentations that uh, our, my division has been working to present and, and educate the public and stakeholders about the Impact Act and what to expect from it. Um, but <clears throat> the, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming, uh, and it's a very sensible act, but what it means is kind of herding cats, pulling in all of these post-acute care providers, all of the different assessment instruments, all of the different quality reporting programs. We have Nursing Home Compare that has public data. We have, now we're building uh, new sites for the uh, long-term care hospital. We're building new sites for the inpatient rehab facility for public reporting. So these are you know, very uh, challenging times, as I said, but it's, it, it's very sensible, but the change is going to be a bit painful. It's going to take a few years, and um, it's not going to be without a little bit of confusion and chaos. And like I said, we're going to try to minimize that whenever we can. So we, we know that um, quality care and improved outcomes is always at the heart of what we want to achieve. Um, <clears throat> but the other benefits of, of the legislation that supports uh, uh, us is you know, the data element uniformity makes sense. Why wouldn't we want to have uniform uh, data across the post-acute care providers? Um, but that's going to take a lot of work uh, with all of the different assessment instruments and the measurement instruments and the quality measures. <clears throat> um, 
and that will enable better comparison of quality and data across the PAC settings. Uh, obviously, we want improved person-centered goals driven discharge planning. Sorry, this has a little echo, so I have to stop emphatically pounding. So, <clears throat> and, um, so we have, uh, you know, exchangeability of data at the heart of it and, and better coordination of care. Um, we've talked about the goals many times in many presentations, and, and we do want the data uniformity, interoperability uh, to guide this, you know, these activities in the quality reporting programs and uh, uh, across the PAC providers. So we uh, have been using the MDS for many, many years, and we know that a lot of things hang from each assessment item. And uh, right now, we know that it's you know care planning, decision and support, you can do quality improvement, uh, quality reporting, it enables care transitions. Right now, though, GG will not have any payment um, uh, aspects to it. That will remain in G. And we know also that the Center for Medicare is working on the SNF payment reform as well. <clears throat> yet another change that may be coming your way. We don't know what that's going to look like yet, but uh, we're all anxiously awaiting, us included, um, the, you know, the uh, my division to see what this is going to look like and how this impacts the um, assessment instruments. So uh, the Impact Act affects the um, post-acute care of home health agencies, SNFs, ERFs, and LTEX, and you know the ideal state. And we don't know when that is going to happen because post-acute care is now just coming into play for all of these um, uh, uh, standardization, uniformity um, aspects. So we have people moving through acute care to post-acute care, and we know a great proportion of uh, Medicare beneficiaries who do go into acute care are seen in some uh, post-acute care provider. Um, they go to home health and then, you know, long-term care. So we just need to make sure that um, we uh, have the information is follow that, that the information follows the person, and this is an evolving um, aspect of, of what we do. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is uh, at at CMS with within the division is the data element library. So we're starting by um, trying to identify all of the data elements that are shared across the post-acute care settings and uh, to uh, enable uh, the interoperability, we're going to try to be uh, assigning um, standard, standard codes so that uh, IT vendors and uh, people can build programs around these standardized data items. So, um, we're just talking about standardized patient assessment data, and I think you're all very adept at what, what this means and why we have that, but you can uh, review that. Oh, wait a minute, I just wanna review the dates. So the use of standardized data um, assessment uh, is legislatively required for home health agencies no later than January 1st, 2019. SNF, October 1, 2018, uh, IRF, tw October 1, 2018, and LTEC, October 1, 2018. So um, these will be publicly reported, the measures that we're introducing today, um, and uh, the data must be submitted with respect to admission and discharge for each patient or more frequently as required. <clears throat> and, you know, the data categories will include functional status, cognitive function and mental status, special services, treatments and interventions, medical conditions and comorbidities, impairments, other categories as specified by the secretary. So now I'm going to move on to the requirements within the SNF QRP as they were finalized in um, the 2016 final rule. Now I will uh, acknowledge that we just published our 2017 SNF PPS 
prospective payment um, rule, and we have proposed three additional claims-based measures for collection in 2018, but those are very different, and um, we are still, uh, you know, in the develop development phase of trying to uh, identify how we publicly report these, and uh, we will be looking to other programs at CMS and to see how they have done it too. We are, we are informed by other quality reporting programs and, and you know, the uh, inpatient uh, hospitals uh, and uh, PQRS and the physician quality reporting system. So we're, you know, it's, we're not in reinventing the wheel here. We are adapting the existing quality reporting programs that CMS has been um, uh, writing rules on for many years now. So uh, this is how we're approaching the um, quality reporting programs in the post-acute care world. Um, so per the statute, the bottom line is, well, there are two things, two major things to take away from the SNF QRP uh, from a policy perspective. One is, are, are the uh, quality measures <clears throat> and the public reporting. And the second is the 2% annual payment update um, uh, that will be determined by how completely one completes the assessment items, the item sets that are uh, related to these um, quality measures. <clears throat> Pardon. So um, those are the two major takeaways. Uh, the public reporting, we have not yet um, uh, written the rule for. That will be coming out next, uh, next rule season. Um, but if you want an idea of what that's going to look like, the IRF and LTEC public reporting is, going, is pretty imminent and is due to begin this fall. So I urge you to pay attention to what's happening there. Sorry. Um, and you know, if you have any interest in how we will probably be approaching the SNF QRP public reporting because uh, we are uh, trying to align our rules and our policies as closely as possible across the post-acute care providers. Um, we are uh, developing our SNF QRP page. We are, you can launch it from the Nursing Home Quality Initiative uh, webpage. Um, and uh, you can, it's at the, at the bottom, it's the SNF quality, Skilled Nursing Facility Quality Reporting Program, um, and uh, it references the Impact Act of 2014. And so if you click that, there, you are taken to a full page <clears throat> that, are, that is uh, SNF QRP specific. So um, in the 2016 rule, we have adopted three quality measures for the SNF QRP that will be collected on October 1st, for the fiscal year 2018 and subsequent annual payment update determinations. All three of these quality measures use assessment data from the MDS and the new three new ones, this slide was not yet um, updated as of the time that the rule was published. And now we will have three claims-based measures that will begin uh, for the 2018 uh, payment determination. So if you please refer to the rule that is um, uh, published annually that we are a rider on this SNF PPS rule. So we, uh, I focus mainly on the uh, policy aspects which includes the t form, time, manner, and timing of, of quality data submission. And we, <clears throat> we determined that a new facility would be required to begin reporting data this is kind of convoluted, but it's really quite simple when you translate it. Um, so data, begin reporting data on any quality measures finalized for that program year by no later than the first day of the calendar quarter subsequent to 30 days after the date on its CMS certification number. Um, I, you know, and translation is, for example, for fiscal year 2018 payment determinations, if a SNF re received its CCN on October 28, 2016, we add 30 days to take it to uh, September, the SNF would be required to submit data for residents who are admitted beginning on October, so on that subsequent quarter. 
I like to make things sound more convoluted than they are. So um, continuing in form, time, manner, and timing of quality data submission, um, we have the uh, timelines and requirements are um, uh, for the fiscal year 2018 payment determination will only include data from October 1st through De December 31st. And these are all residents who are admitted to the SNF on and after October 1st and December 31st. Uh, beginning with the fiscal year 28 payment determination, SNFs must report all of the data necessary to calculate the quality measures on at least 80% of the MDS assessments that they submit. Now, there are a great many questions around this uh, requirement. Um, first of all, we are not, we're not doing a qualitative analysis of how you answer these questions. We're looking just at are you answering all of the um, item sets required to calculate the data. So we do have a data analytics contractor that will be coming online in September, and they will be, we will be working with them very quickly to identify exactly how we calculate the um, threshold of 80%. <coughs> So we, um, we, we feel that we, we identify a SNF as compliant with the QRP if all of the data necessary to calculate the measures has been submitted to fully calculate the quality measures. So for example, a measure cannot be calculated um, when the use of a dash indicates that you are unable to perform a pressure ulcer assessment. So avoid using the dashes and use, use all the codes at your disposal for um, uh, you know, identifying what that, uh, that resident looks like uh, for that measure, for that item. So do avoid the dash. Now, we've already looked at how many people are using dashes in pressure ulcers and falls, and you all far and away exceed that 80% threshold. So none of you have anything to worry about in, this, in these two measures. So what you just need to pay attention to is Section GG and the PPS discharge um, assessments to make sure that all of the data is being filled out as, as, re as required. So um, I just wanted to reassure you all that you know, this two of the measures are already very well documented by everyone across the industry. Um, uh, we also are talking about the uh, um, requirements in the um, event of a natural disaster, and this is covered under Section J, exception and extension requirements for the 2018 payment determination. Um, and you know, our experience with other QRPs across uh, other programs in, in, in CMS has shown that there are times when providers are unable to submit quality data due to extraordinary circumstances beyond their control, and we've, we're seeing more and more natural disasters across the United States. Um, when I lived and worked in Florida, we had five hurricanes in one season, which was back in 2005, and that was pretty extraordinary, and, and a lot of facilities were, were, were heavily impacted. And looking at Louisiana now, I have no idea what those facilities must be looking like. Uh, so a SNF may request an exception or extension for the SNF QRP within 90 days of the data that uh, of the date that the extraordinary circumstances occurred. So there are, you know, uh, mechanisms um, to account for those those difficulties. Um, so these, uh, beginning with um, the fiscal year 2018, I keep repeating that, and to subsequent years, a SNF would receive a notification of noncompliance if CMS determines that the, that the provider failed to submit data in accordance with the data reporting requirements um, for that uh, fiscal year. So we will be, um, you know, uh, sending a letter and this typically, I think we're developing this for future rulemaking, but um, uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, IRF and LTEC, I believe, are using the MACs to 
um, notify uh, the providers of noncompliance. The public display aspect, as I mentioned earlier, is under development. Um, we, uh, we know that IRF and LTEC are uh, going to be publicly reported on a new platform that CMS is developing for um, uh, all you know, different providers. But we also uh, are dealing with, right now, the fact that we have nursing home compare. So what we want to think about is, um, you know, do we want to keep all of the public reporting together in one site with nursing home compare you know, on that site? Would that be easier for everybody? Um, or would, uh, if you have a look at the new um, websites that will be launched this fall for IRF and LTEC for public reporting of the quality data, <clears throat> will that be a better place for it? So, you know, we are thinking about this, um, and uh, your input is welcome. We, you know, if you have any ideas about where you would like to see that, I'll be willing to hear it. Um, but the decision, you know, rests on a lot of uh, different factors. So um, that concludes my just brief overview of the um, policy aspects of the um, SNF quality reporting program and, <clears throat> and, and its requirements and the IMPACT Act. So right now I'm just going to do a, a small um, uh, you know, evaluation and test your knowledge. So if a dash is used to code an, an MDS item, that is included in the calculation of a quality measure, that item cannot be used in the calculation of that measure. Is that true or false? Does anybody need time to think about it? <laughs> you need 60 minutes to think about that? So, hmm? I don't know what you're saying. Okay, well, we know it's true. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, beginning with the fiscal year, sorry, 2018 payment determination, um, NIFS must report all of the data necessary to calculate the quality measures on at least 80% of the MDS assessments that they submit. Is this true or false? Okay, do we have consensus that this is false? No, okay, <laughs> so we, it is obviously true. And if a SNF provider is unable to submit quality data due to extraordinary circumstances beyond their control, for example, natural or man-made disasters, they may request an exception or extension, true or false? Okay. We need 60 seconds to contemplate that and cogitate on that? No. Okay. So it's obviously true. And finally, a SNF may request an exception or extension for the SNF QRP within 120 days of the date that the extraordinary circumstances occurred. Is this true or false? Okay, thank you. You're right. <clears throat> So, you know, we are building this program. It's, it's, it's launched in, uh, on October with the first of the data. You know, we've, um, we're working with our contractors very diligently. We have excellent colleagues from, you know, RTI, Research Triangle Institute, who are, have been helping us write with, with the measure research and development for many years um, uh, with um, our data analytics contractor, who are not, they're not here today, but they are the ones who are going to be um, determining the threshold, the, the compliance thresholds, and helping us with that aspect of it. Um, and, you know, we're trying to make sure that we are keeping everybody abreast uh, with all of the announcements. We're using increasingly more email blasts to the, um, uh, through the CMS portal. Uh, and hopefully that is sufficient for you. But if you have any feedback, questions, you know, clarifications, we urge you to use 
the, our help desk that is specific to the SNF QRP, which is SNF quality questions at cms.hhs.gov, and that's available on the website. Um, and, uh, you know, we have several help desks. One is Impact Act specific, uh, and, you know, you can use that one. Uh, if we feel that when we get a help desk question that it's really more appropriate, say, for the Nursing Home Compare Better Care help desk, we will forward it to you and let you know that we did that. Um, but we will try to be as responsive as possible. We are building this. We're still learning. A lot of, a lot of your questions take some research time to really figure it out. We're, you know, because we're building these programs uh, as we go. Uh, so we don't always have the answers right at our fingertips. And, and that may be the case for some of the questions you asked today. And we appreciate all of your questions because it gets us thinking about what we need to pay attention to. Um, so please keep the questions coming, and uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask us questions and be patient with us if we don't know the answer today. And I thank you very much for coming, and it's great to see you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day's training. <laughs>